Two words for this video, ugly. Today we're going to be laughing at the weirdest fighter designs ever to be approved by obviously desperate Imperial engineers. All of which are playable in Empire War, so stay tuned to see some genuinely absurd looking starfighters. When conquering the galaxy, you'll end up facing many problems with no easy solution. Upon the Empire's expansion to the Outer Rim, fighter pilots observed they did not have the necessary firepower to destroy corvettes or freighters without support. This spurred the creation of the Heavy TIE, aka the TIE Brute. The TIE Brute's guns pack significantly more firepower due to its extra outer rigger pod, similar to the TIE Bomber. Because the fighter was larger and less maneuverable, it would be built with thicker armor, causing the viewport design to look a little different from the regular TIE. In order to justify the creation of the entire new Starfighter line, these heavy fighters would be equipped with life support systems and droid co-pilots, which function similarly to the astromech in the X-Wing. So, this is one of the first TIE designs to incorporate those features. Whilst Imperial engineers saw this as an improvement, the Navy's admirals were less impressed. They believed the adoption of a heavy fighter would negate the need for larger support crafts. So, for that reason, TIE brutes would not be favoured by Imperial officers. As a heavy fighter, it serves its role quite well, but due to the cost and disapproval by senior command, it would never see mass service across the galaxy like the cheaper TIE fighters and bombers. In terms of looks, it's not too bad, especially compared to some of the other TIE designs on this list. This next unique TIE would be a compromise between the TIE Brute and the TIE Interceptor. Enter the TIE Phantom. It was designed under strict secrecy by Palpatine's orders, and the Empire decided it needed a new starfighter that could catch Rebel pilots off guard. While some officers found the upgrades to be heavy-handed, the TIE Phantom would undeniably be a TIE Interceptor in combat. The design of the Phantom would be centered around its incredible ability to cloak, as no other starfighters in the galaxy had this technology. Borrowing from the best designs in the galaxy, the Phantom would have an elongated cockpit for two pilots and cargo. This was inspired by the famous Corellian Engineering Corporation designs. The triangular profile was likely taken from the excellent Clone Wars era interceptor, the Droid TIE Fighter. Its triple wing design greatly aided maneuverability and its armament layout allowed for maximum firepower. The TIE Phantom incorporated all of the best designs into one to make a quick, maneuverable, deadly and unseen interceptor. The technology of the ship was cutting edge as it was provided with a class 1 hyperdrive, life support systems, deflectors, navigation computer and a very impressive energy reserve. The ship had the ability to approach targets unseen and fire all five of its guns simultaneously. Once engaged, the Phantom had the ability to dogfight due to its survivability and firepower, but can also get away in a pinch due to its cloaking and thrusters. This Starfighter was intended to be a direct upgrade to the TIE Interceptor, outperforming it in every way possible. Through pure chance, the Rebel Alliance learned of their existence after a Rebel pilot narrowly escaped a dogfight with this previously unseen ship. Upon realizing the danger in allowing the Empire to keep this fleet of starfighters, Admiral Akbar dispatched Rebel agents to steal a TIE Phantom in order to study it. During the heist, Rebel operatives were able to destroy the entire Phantom shipyard along with all the remaining TIE Phantoms. Although the Alliance were unable to replicate the TIE Phantom after stealing one, the destruction of the Empire's new superiority fighter was a great victory. The next Starfighter is pretty out of place for the Empire, considering this TIE is quite powerful and expensive. Imperial Admiralty typically treated Starfighters as an afterthought, which makes this impressive ship a very rare find. The TIE Oppressor was a strike fighter, intended to bring significantly more firepower than other TIEs. It was used as a first wave bomber outfitted with a heavy payload and impressive shielding. However, being designed as a strike fighter, it could fulfill multiple roles. Although the Oppressor has more surface area than most TIEs, it wasn't a very big target, allowing it to dogfight against multiple fighter crafts. 
The Oppressor was designed with upgrades in mind. These ships could be modified with booster jets and anti-fighter missiles. Such changes would allow it to turn into a dangerous foe against even the deadliest of enemies. Although the craft typically did not have impressive top speeds, its survivability and firepower would often surprise rebel pilots who had not encountered this craft before. Only veteran pilots were allowed to fly these ties, as it required exceptional piloting skills to be used at its max maximum potential. Furthermore, all possible candidates were screened for loyalty to the Empire due to the massive cost of this fighter. Whilst this TIE absolutely had potential, the lack of Imperial veteran pilots and funds would cause this line of star fighters to be discontinued. Now, before we get into the most odd fighters ever developed, I wanted to answer a question that is asked quite often. People question, if X-Wings were so much better than TIEs, why didn't the Empire just switch Starfighter designs? The answer? They did, introducing the TIE Hunter, the X-Wings bootlegged cousin. The TIE Hunter was developed for the Hyper Elite Imperial Storm Commandos. The Hunter was equipped with two laser cannons, two iron cannons and a proton torpedo launcher and technically had less firepower than the X-Wing but was equally survivable considering its incredible speed, adequate shielding and hyperspace capabilities. Whilst TIE Hunters were a significant improvement to almost all TIE variants, their time to produce would relegate them to be used exclusively with the Empire Storm Commandos. The following series of TIEs were produced to innovate a new remote piloted starfighter as the Sea Rook unmanned swarm fighters were not yet available to the Empire in large quantities. Starting with the TIE Experimental Mark IV, creatively named the Bomb. No, it didn't get its name from being the life of an Imperial party, instead it was named for its function. The MK4 was simply a TIE fighter stripped of guns, armor and a pilot, all of which was replaced by explosives and a large engine in order to make the fighter into more of a cruise missile. Once the fighter designated a target, it would use its speed to catch the target and cause a massive detonation on impact. Simple and effective. Following the simplified methods of use the MK4 had, the MK3, named the Warhead, was an automated TIE interceptor with added concussion missile launchers, capable of deadly alpha strikes against enemies. The addition of these rather bulky concussion launchers reduced the interceptor speed and mobility. However, once again, the removal of the pilot afforded the fighter with enough space to install deflector shields with no significant drop in performance. While the research and development of ordnance-based starfighters were not futile, the creation of these ordnance-based droid fighters would ultimately be inconsequential to the Galactic Civil War. Moving away from missiles and bombs, the TIE Experimental Mark II, named the Big Gun, was a new TIE design attempting to create the automated version of a TIE Brute. Instead of two light cockpit mounted laser cannons, the Mark II was upgraded with two large guns that would be mounted to the wing hubs. These weapons had the ability to swivel in a similar fashion as the A-Wing Interceptor. Whilst it did not have the same maneuverability, it packed vastly more firepower than a standard TIE, whilst not sacrificing on speed. In the end, this fighter would be relegated to a second-class fighter, similar to the TIE Brute. Finally, I have saved the worst for last. The ugliest TIE to ever exist, in my opinion, is the TIE Experimental Mark I, affectionately named Bizarro. The Mark I was most likely a fever dream that unfortunately was pitched to the higher-ups in the Imperial Army, in a promise that they would pack a Star Destroyer's firepower in few squadrons of these droid fighters. Each fighter was equipped with a single solar wing panel and two cockpit style pods. While one pod contained the sensors and targeting computer, the other pod housed a turbo laser more powerful than any Starfighter weapon ever developed. That is, until the completion of the Sun Crusher, which is an absurdly powerful super weapon in the size of a Starfighter. But anyway, the Mark I's turbo laser was so powerful it could cause as much damage as a capital ship if used in numbers. This droid fighter had impressive energy reserves, allowing it to reach higher top speeds than most standard ties while also packing a serious punch. But this fighter wasn't particularly useful in dogfighting, considering its oversized gun and lack of shielding. For fighter engagements, it has a hyperdrive, so it may escape. 
but had this fighter been employed properly in large numbers, it could have been one of the more common ties, such as the bomber or interceptor. Thankfully, after the destruction of the research facility it originated from, we never had to see this abomination again. But before we go, I want to give a special thanks to a tie designed so badly, the company who made the parts, Sina Fleet Systems, did not recognize it as an actual tie. Thank you to the TIE Raptor for reminding us as bad as things can be, it could have been a lot worse. This tie was focused around dogfighting, sacrificing speed for firepower and maneuverability. However, this design was cobbled together using spare parts by Warlord Zinger's engineers. Anyways, what did you think about the weirdest TIE fighters in Empire War? Do you have one that you would like to see on the big screen? We're thinking of continuing this series of weird versions of classic ships you know and love. So if you're interested in another, like the video and leave a comment. As you know, I do read your comments and I try to get back to as many of you as I can. But besides that, guys, I've been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.